What changed um, dramatically was the notion that somehow our differences were irreconcilable, that people refused to work across the political aisle. And, people, and, and as time um, passed, more people uh, were facing a political penalty, you know, at home and in, in, in primaries, for example. Um, and even in the general election, if they worked on a bipartisan basis, depending on the makeup of their state or their congressional district. So that all dramatically changed. There was less incentive to work across the aisle because there was no reward for it. In fact, it was a penalty invited to primary challenge. Uh, so ultimately what evolved was members of the House and members of the Senate were more focused now on who's going to be casting those ballots in the, in the primary. You know, uh, who's going to be not, you know, who will be their competitor as opposed to the broader population and the more, you know, and broader views on particular issues. And so that evolved, and especially in the last few years. And then suddenly, you know, I think in the aftermath of the financial crisis, the issues became more intractable. And there basically became a legislative lockdown. There were people weren't willing to work across the aisle. You know, there used to be these gangs of 14s where you get together, even I'm a Democrats and Republicans to solve problems. I was part of that when we had some major issues on, you know, Supreme Court nominations, for example. Um, and, well, I said it came down to a gang of one. It was me at one point. Hmm. Uh, I was the only, you know, the, sort of the lone ranger uh, working on legislative issues across the aisle because uh, people were, were hesitant uh, to, to do it without, you know, fearing a political primary.